Welcome back, Aces people. So you can see we're in a virtual space of a lot of numbers. This video is actually going to double into my guide about how did I get here. So let's get into that a little bit. So here we are. We got our laptop out. We got ourselves a test engine. Actually, this is this is a customer's unit we're testing in just as a courtesy. But we're going to go through this guide about the basic setup and how we connect to our ECU with a laptop and one of these really nifty tuning cables right here. This is our CAN cable, but I'm gonna go through end to end of how we're connected and what it looks like. The first big thing we need to think about is safety. Do we have a fire extinguisher? Well, yes, we do. We have one of those, we have an engine. Yes, it's on a safe and level ground. Imagine this is a car today, but you wanna be safe when you're doing these things. A lot of bad things can happen in a garage and it's really up to us to take the responsibility to make sure when we are doing work on an engine or on a car, we are saving, staying safe. Fire extinguishers, jack stands, lots of ventilation. So that's why I like to start all these guides with some safety tips about how to keep you right and not have any kind of bad, bad, bad weekends. So let's get to the guide right here. Step one, safety and prep. We've already covered that. Connecting to the system. So here's some things. We're gonna, I'm gonna bring the software up right about here-ish somewhere, but let's get over here to the ACES software. Now this right here, you can see I've already had it brought up for some other reasons, but let me just maximize this and we'll go ahead and we select system. So this is just like as if you turn the system on right now, open the software, we got everything going on. We are on a kill shot too on this particular video because that's what we're testing today. Right here, we are in, we've got a kill shot too. The next thing we need to do is take our cable and plug it into our CAN cable right here on my test stand. So this thing right here, just a little click. If you go to disconnect this thing, a little bit of thumb pressure, a bit of a wiggle. Sometimes it'll fight you, but not usually. When you're running your cable itself, you wanna make sure you're not gonna break the USB ports on your laptop, which I've done, and make sure you're not melting it on a header so run it somewhere that makes the most amount of sense. Nothing crazy, right there. And then if you can see right here on this, we got blue. So if I turn the power off, it's gone. If we turn the power onto the ECU, it's blue. This is indicating there is power coming from the ECU side. We're gonna plug it into my laptop right here. And so we got blue on the laptop side and the red light indicates that it is talking to it. So it's running canned stuff back and forth. Hey, are you there? Hey, yes, I'm here, so on and so forth. Now here on the software, we got it up. We've selected the system we're working with. We go connect to ECU. It's gonna give the little spin dial in the middle and run through the calibration itself. It's actually gonna pull the calibration from the ECU. And now we have our tune file loaded up. The first screen that it starts off with is all this information. So if we go back and we look at our guide, we can see we selected the system. It's doing good. We've connected a CAN cable. Talked about that a little bit. we we'll zoom in there just a little bit. Link software to ECU. It's as simple as that. This guide and this video is going to go together really nicely. And I want to do my best to make sure I'm not skipping any steps because I have a tendency to get ahead of myself sometimes. So here we go. Monitor, view, and verify sensors. We are going to go into this area which we already started off in. That's why I decided to put that first. And we're going to look in here. We're going to look at what the map is. We're reading pretty close to atmosphere. This is in KPA, so you're looking at roughly about 100 KPA, depending on your altitude. If it's in, uh, say, for instance, if we wanted to switch it over to Imperial units, we hit the gear at the top. We go down here. We click American Freedom Units. Give it a save. There we go. It's still going to read that map right there, but now everything else is in PSI and such. Map just makes more sense on the tuning side to a lot of people because when they see PSI, they think pressure. Well, it's it's an absolute pressure from absolutely zero to our atmosphere, which is 14 and some change or 100 kPa. That's why you see it like that. You see, we've already run this engine today. It's at 118 degrees, looking good there. TPS is zeroed out. We don't need to do any work there. Fuel pressure is slowly bleeding back down for our systems because it does have the internal fuel pressure sensor in it. You know, everything is looking pretty good. The wideband is reading, but it's not, the heater is not on currently. So it's not really gonna do anything until we get voltage, it heats up and then starts going into closed loop operations. 
Injection pulse width, this is a good one. That's good for starting. So if you see it between eight, 10 or 12 or so, that's your startup fuel of like when you're cranking it, how much fuel is it giving it while cranking until it starts and then calms back down to about two for your, you know, your average small block as it goes. So this is pretty good data right here. Nothing, nothing sticks out that says, hey, I shouldn't start this engine right now. Air fuels aren't online yet because, well, the O2 sensor isn't online yet. And we can see that right here. See the 1.5, 1.49? That just means it's just chilling, reading just normal atmosphere, not doing anything crazy. So back to the guide. If we look here, we can go in to do some custom setup, right? I explain it a little bit point by point right here, but what we're gonna do is we are gonna set up our own custom thing. It does not take a lot of time. Let me get this right there. Hey, whose software is that? Let's go here. We're gonna hit the settings button. Cool. Say you wanna go through and you wanna see fuel, fuel injection pulse width, for instance. That's a good one. It's gonna give a lot of information about fuel. You got EGT stuff. If you got EGTs installed on here, all the all the different it, this or that parameters, as I like to call them. But we want to do something more interesting. We want to go and do say custom eight. There's nothing in here. We want to see. Let's go map sensor. We hit this button. We go. I like the ECT. We engine coolant temperature. That's a good one. TPS to make sure it's zeroed out or what position it's in when you're running. We want to see fuel pressure. We want to see target, AFR, actual AFR. That's a good one. Injection pulse width, loop percent. Perfect. Let's see what else we'd like to see here. Also on this, if you like, if you're using your mouse pad, you can just two fingers on it and it scrolls up and down real smooth. Sometimes that's uh, super handy, especially when you're trying to just cruise through a tune real fast after you get some good practice in on how to get in here and what you're looking for. So these are some of the basic ones we're gonna go with right now. Um, we, we'll put timing in there too. That's a, that's a nice one to do. But this one's called Custom 8. I'm gonna change the name on that. I'm gonna call it Kill Shot 2 Filming. That way I can remember later to empty that thing out. We go over to group box number one and we call, we look for KS2 filming. We hit save and we notice that shows up right over here. One of the best things that we've done with the software is the fact that we allow pop outs. We hit the pop out button and you got this little window that stays on top of everything. And I do mean everything like if you go over here, it stays on top of your document too. So that's fun. I like to put it over here. So let's go back to the software here. Looking good. We're gonna go down to the fuel injector icon. All right there, so we are ready for the next stage of this. Let's go over here to the document. Now that we've got that, you can minimize it too, it's not a big deal. But pop out windows, custom calibration shortcuts, that is the business when you're trying to set up for a tune. And there's some other steps we can do as well as we cruise through this document before we actually start to adjust anything. I'm gonna start this thing up here in just, uh, just a little bit. So we got fuel tuning, idle setup, so on and so forth, quick checks after connection, that's good. This is the normal stuff you're gonna go through. IAC position, map, battery voltage. Ah, I didn't add the IAC position in there. That's a good one to know. So we can go ahead and do, correct that small mistake. We go back to here. We hit the settings button. I wanted to make sure to show this. That way you guys know just in case you did a thing and you forgot to add something in there, this is a good avenue of going back. So we're gonna go to IAC position. There it is. It's as easy as hitting save. And then when you go back to your floating window, IAC position populates. So now we know exactly where that IAC is at. So is it too much? Is it too little? What have you not? This is all important information to know when you're doing your first initial basic tuning with our software. So that's, that's what you're doing setting this up. Now there's, there's other stuff you can do, like if you go in here, you can hit this custom settings right here and do a lot of the same stuff you did with this uh, Kill Shot 2, this floating window. You can do another 
custom item over here on the left. Let's just pick one right here. Anything. It doesn't even matter what that is. We'll just hit save. So we get a little car over here. So anything that's a table, a 1D graph, whatever it is, a setting, if it's something you want to quickly reference during the tuning process, you have a lot less areas to travel. You don't have to go to the spark and then the, to the fuel icon or to the rev limiter. You just put everything in here in the custom items and you can sit there and cruise through them just one at a time, making all the adjustments you want to do, saving yourself a lot of time. If you're trying to learn how to do this and get this thing set up or adapt from another company's software, hopefully this gets you in the right direction. So let's start this thing up. Mind you, this is on the wizard right now. We haven't even tuned anything. But look at that, all the, all the appropriate data is right here at our fingertips now. If we wanted to go in and do fuel adjustments, which is in a whole other video, we'll be, we'll be actually going through, picking up where we left off right here and going through the basic fuel adjustments to the table at idle and trying to interpolate the rest of the table as well. So hang in there with me on that one.